Hello, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. Um, hope everybody is doing very well. Today, we're uh, talking with Eric Rupert, the CEO of Alt Plus, um, who mainly focuses on engineered bamboo solutions, but not only. So um, thank you very much, Eric, for being here. Yeah, JJ, thank you for having me. And I guess I should say us because we got a, a little audience here in the background. So thanks for having us. Yeah, well, great having you guys here and that you guys have time to talk what you're doing and, and, and show a little bit how you're doing it and, and uh, also talk about your vision. And, mm. um, and um, yeah, uh, it's um, amazing. <laughs> and I see you're, you're sitting on, on uh, um, um, uh, engineered bamboo, right? Yeah, so I got, like when we were setting this up, I thought, you know, I might as well just bring it right into the factory and, and show you some of the new stuff we're doing. Uh, because it's not just, uh, you know, us, it's the industry needs to move this way uh, in an engineered bamboo sense. Um, so I'm sitting on top of yeah, structural composite lumber engineered bamboo. So these are engineered bamboo composites, uh, single press, large beam. Uh, this is LVB specifically, laminated veneer bamboo, uh, but we, we can have uh, another category as well. Um, and they are six meters long. Uh, the lower one here is, is 300 section by 500. Uh, so we're so doing lar large pieces here. And you're and you're working with industry standards because obviously six meters is like a pretty big standard, right? To to build stuff and and uh, I think mm. that's one of your uh, your your um, hard focus to to really like standardize bamboo um, added value at the mm. end. Yeah, the goal, I mean, uh, is to bring it to the to the market as you know quick as possible and as broadly as possible. And to do that, we have to work with the standards. And so in, in, a, that in exists. A construction uh, terminology and building regulations, uh, yeah, we're trying to do the, the best we can with, with the current infrastructure to, to make things cost effective at a standard mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, consistent. So the market is always getting this and, and, you know, we're really encouraging this across the board so that, uh, you know, the whole industry can, can move it this way. That's what's going to uh, reduce the price and, and make this more widely understood and available for you know, the market that and, really can use it. And, and probably you're located at the best place currently. You're in, in, in China, right? Where you have tons of uh, unlimited yeah. amounts of uh, bamboo, muscle bamboo, probably. Yeah, so I'm yeah I'm sitting on uh, Moso uh, bamboo here. This is uh, a Malju in uh, Chinese. We are uh, in Fujian province, about 300 kilometers, maybe 200 kilometers uh, from the coast. Uh, that's in the south. Uh, Wuishan is probably the place that some people might know. Uh, but this is like a hotbed for bamboo industry uh, in terms of export market like this area has been exporting to the ikeas and the home depots and the you know the the, the the big big stores for um you know the majority of the modern engineered bamboo uh, history so this area understands bamboo understands processing uh has lots of support has lots of bamboo and it's not just fujian i mean we're right uh don't throw away from the bordering province which is Jiangxi. Zhejiang's just mm -hmm. north of us. Uh, so you, you're really just taking uh, a, a huge resource uh, that, that's really so, moved along the industry this, this far. So you have the material, the raw material, you have the experts, and uh, mm. this is like the Silicon Valley of uh, Chinese bamboo. <laughs> or... Yeah, I mean, uh, if you, you <laughs> could uh, throw some capital in there. We're going to be real uh, busy with it. But uh, I think that, yeah, it has the right mix. Um, certain areas are still uh, specialized in other areas, and you know we're all over the place in China still with with you know taking either the raw uh, the, the the resource and processing it. But here is where we are our core function for engineered bamboo materials, like what what you see here. This, so I I understand this is like really the place where you transform it, and um, 
Eric, maybe you can like um, give uh, us an insight of, of your journey. I mean, you're you're uh, from Canada and now you're in, in China. You're within mm. the bamboo industry. How was this journey? What can you uh, share? I mean, it's pretty uh, uh, wild. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm a little bit uh, uh, used to it now, but it, it, it is, um, you know, it's unique here even, uh, you know, meeting someone uh, just, just last week who mentioned, hey, I'm looking for a, a partner that can do engineered bamboo. And I said, well, I think I, I know the guy. And, you know, they're shocked to find out that I'm doing this in the, in the industry here and also selling it here. Uh, so that kind of journey, um, I can give you a, a real short version of it. I always wanted to create something, a, a business that is. Uh, so after university, uh, I was living in Vancouver and I uh, was, this is where it gets even more fun. I answered one of these Craigslist <laughs> business partner uh, messages. Really? I, I, yeah, wow. I promise. And uh, <laughs> it was, it was a really well-written article about uh, going to create an e-commerce platform to compete against Alibaba, which is, you know, a giant now. I didn't even know what it was at the time. This is back in 2011. And 2010, 2011. And uh, when I answered that, the person wrote me back immediately. Uh, we clicked, uh, suffice to say. Uh, he, he was a Chinese immigrant to, to Canada. He had been away mm -hmm. from China for uh, quite a long time, and he had this plan to develop a business over here. I joined him in a very short time. We came over, and we started building this platform to bring factories to you know, the, the world markets, we can say. But mm -hmm. his background was bamboo. He, he had studied wood machinery, wood equipment, and also he knew a lot of like the, the, the adaptation of, of the bamboo. And he had a, a really uh, great access for thinking about how it was going to be used in the West. And so as time went by, a few months, we, but that business was not uh, looking as easy to maintain and the bamboo was just really right in my crosshairs with what I loved, what I kind of understood coming from Canada and understanding the, 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 the wood products in industry and the forestry. And, you know, I just saw this exact alignment, but in bamboo. And mm -hmm. um, so at that time uh, we closed that down. We met another partner who wanted to be more focused, just take um, a help to bring his, factory to the world and so I just jumped all in and I went to essentially here uh, just down the road about three hours and um, uh, spent the next four years of my life in a town called Jiangha and that's where yeah. I just studied the supply chain how everything works how you know the, the business climate in, in China the culture here because I knew nothing mm -hmm. prior to that the language uh, in, a, in, a, in a deep sense the language uh, so I kind of just kept falling into it deeper and deeper. And, and the more I, I understood, the more I recognized it, a really, really great opportunity in the future. If I could be patient enough, diligent enough, get, get the right talent to work with me and just, you know, be a little stubborn at times. But um, yeah, so that continued on. And I, I've been in bamboo since, since those uh, early days. And I have been very lucky to meet, you know, great, great people specialize in their fields with and and you know learn with them and grow uh more of my knowledge but also my team's knowledge and and really just working for you know these solutions in, in the way that we talked about right at the top mm -hmm. and and um regarding engineer bamboo because now some people who are deeper into the bamboo um rabbit hole they know mm -hmm. what uh, engineer bamboo is but how do you explain engineer bamboo or structured bamboo um, to uh, outsiders or people uh, who, who um, uh, don't know that it exists? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, uh, it's, it is in a lot of technical language around the world already, and it has been for a very, you know, actually a long time. Um, and so we, we, I just go to that language, and I don't mean too technical, but everybody in the West knows engineered wood or they know lumber, right? Yeah. So it's, it's not hard to kind of, um, parallel the two and, and you know these are like a family of materials the behavior is um, similar enough that they can be categorized the same they can be 
tested and using all the same testing methodologies. You got to change them for, uh, of course, certain properties, but um, it, it can stick, right? Like if you talk about uh, the mass timber, you know, it's uh, it's not something thread. totally different, like something alien. Like it's something they can compare to and are used to, but it's just it's based on bamboo instead of based of uh, on wood. That's the main sure. difference. Right? It's, it's, I mean, you you don't even if you're not being told it's bamboo, like you're probably just gonna think I'm sitting on a, a big kind of glue lamb beam here or something with a really nice finish quality. So. And what about sorry? What what about the the current um, the price um, point? Um, hmm. regarding because probably everybody is going to compare the, the price point right um or or what's what are the main values which uh, you, you on your daily business when you talk to uh, clients um what are yeah. their um, um questions so we um this is the top subject in fact i believe it, it needs to be because <laughs> okay. the, the materials um uh, everybody can talk about how wonderfully they perform how uh sustainable they are and and exactly. um, you know how accessible this material is around the world but the cost has to be relative to something in the market and yep. really until now it's just it's not it's um it's, it's premium to um engineered wood products um mm -hmm. i mean you look at the application i'm talking about using it for construction use in in, in structural composite lumbers uh if you're using decoration things like this okay you can justify it, yeah. it competing with other nice finishes and things like that but um, when you're talking about structure, you know, you're not people, not many people are building homes with like, oh, right? like it, uh, it doesn't work that way. So we need to bring the price point down. And there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, now we, we, I mean, behind me here is one of those targets. That's part of the process, you know, automation, uh, better, um, auto, better, uh, machining, better, uh, processes mm -hmm. in the early stages of of bringing it to um, you know a dimensional component, uh, so we are working on that. My goal is to bring it down to a, a, a competitive price with uh, all wood products in terms of engineered wood products. Uh, that's where we mm -hmm. need to be. That's the one that we work with in terms of um, you know relativity in the, in the market and talking to engineers and owners and. Uh, architects of course so that's that's got to be our target uh, it needs to come down right now it's palpable but it's for it's for a more select part, portion of the market um so mm -hmm. i see that happening um in in the next few years is a, is a realistic uh, uh trend in, in my opinion also with wood prices always uh fluctuating uh that makes it really possible i mean in the last mm -hmm. three years the prices were similar when, when the wood was kind of going all over the, the market so um mm -hmm. it's very stable and in terms of its opportunity it has a lot of opportunity to be reduced in price so that's a great thing and what about the the raw material i mean being in china i i remember seeing a number which was like a, a massive number of of a bamboo mussel forest so probably I assume there is no issue of raw material in China or is there already? No. So the raw material, I mean, now I think we have to switch uh, industry when we talk about what, what we're doing with raw material, uh, the pulp industry, this is mm -hmm. where it's really coming into demand. And so like when you start talking about paper, pulp, fiber mm -hmm. products, that kind of consumption is, is a huge driver. And mm -hmm. now that's not uh, to say something that is um, in in any kind of sensitivity now, but it's certainly going to be the the, the part where you, you're going to have a huge push to use these resources there as so well. So they consume more. The pulp uh, industry I mean, is like the real big consumer in in, in well, material. It's, it's certainly yeah. If you're looking at like the global consumption and on the in the short term, like let's say five ten years, that's going to be the, mm -hmm. the spot. Um, and so, uh, for what we're using, there's plenty. Also, for for the okay. fiber industry, there's plenty. Uh, the challenge is you got to have systems like what happens in the really well productive systems here from the harvest, bringing them to to the you know the mills essentially. Mm -hmm. They're very uh, 
controlled way. So some centers, that system that's set up and they have the basic infrastructure for farmers and, and everybody to access, and, then, and they can bring it down, harvest it, no mm -hmm. problem. Uh, but there's there's a lot of untapped resources. You don't have to go far down the road here where the, it's just growing and dying. Like it's just, this is not being even applied to anything. Yes. So okay. so yeah, there's vast resources in this. And um, so we talked a little bit about the engineer bamboo. Um, you also mentioned the pure bam biomaterials, which is another uh, stream you're focusing on, also, right? Yeah, so uh, maybe just to kind of imagine the, the, the business unit, we do the engineered materials and also uh, in a similar, uh, well, it's the same species. It can be a more mixed species product, but um, we can use the waste. We can also use uh, the, the fresh combs or the old combs to, to create pulp and, and fiber products. And so mm -hmm. the Pure Bam is a, a product that is, is for pulp. And so that's mm. packaging systems, that's daily use wares, that's, uh, you know, like you, you buy your Starbucks and you got your, your, your four coffee your cup. uh, cups yeah. in there. And I guess I should say your Tim Hortons and you get your four coffee cups in there uh, and that little <laughs> holder. So that's, that's like the, yeah. the path. And you see this, some big companies are, are jumping on board. I know, uh, I think it was like even KFC, uh, last year two years ago they're like all their buckets you know they they switched over to using bamboo uh mm, wow. uh mix now now the thing is those products are are very good and well but um the process is different like how you achieve the, the technical fiber and how you get to that um mm -hmm. there's there's of course different ways to do that very similar to the other agricultural uh uh, fibers out there, but what we have been working on and what we've been uh, established in a, in a scale production is a, a simply mechanically separated fiber. So we don't have to mm. wash it. We don't. I mean, of course, if you want some some targeted light colors, you have to wash it. But we don't have to do yeah. any washing to separate it. And so okay. it's a very low energy impact, very um, uh, non toxic. Uh, uh, fiber that it's the results. So, and then also it's mechanically very high. So you can use those in different kinds of parts. Like, uh, so we're talking about the, 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 the pulp and the pure pressing, but if you use those in compounds as well, you're getting a very high level, like a composite with polymer, mm -hmm. you're getting a very high performing fiber there. So, so this is um, a very significant breakthrough in, in that game as well. And so these two- I'd probably the yeah. carbon footprint there is is pretty low compared to uh, other uh, fibers being uh, the the polymer plastic uh, alternatives or or any other i mean if if we would compare the carbon footprint or the even the water footprint right right so you're you're getting savings in a lot of areas not not just the carbon area but you know the the the, the water footprint and all of the you know the handling of of all those materials now, there's a, it's always a trade-off, right? Like you're not getting the yeah. exactly pure um, fiber that you will see in all the other products, but you can do that still if that's what the market's pushing for, which you have different categories of this, but still it's it's very um, necessary for this to be a, a, a strong position to use that fiber in, in such a high quality and, and doing so with a low, low impact if possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's that's pretty interesting, actually. Um, also, that uh, you have been able to this is like Alt Plus, right? Um, set up like different um, streams of of production and and basically use everything. Right. Of right. You want? I mean, that's the that's. I mean, I guess what just kept happening here. I, I just the <laughs> recognition. I mean, that's it's no different than what's happening or has happened for the last hundred more years in the wood industry and the forests in, uh, of, of uh, Northern uh, Europe and North America, Brazil, um, you, you have those, those industrial companies that are they're just processing the, the resources in a very efficient and effective way uh, and in a sustainable way and bamboo should be done no differently. Um, and that's, that's just, you know, where we're, we're learning and applying. And, and of course, you just have to adjust it per, per case. But, you know, 
those those have serviced such a huge global market demand. And they're not even found where we are. You know, you can't find those resources here. Like the bamboo uh, resources are all in the inverse position of all those forests. So when we're talking about supporting the global market, it's very realistic. But yeah, you know, and efficient and effective to to have those kinds of uh, local supports, and and it can be replicated outside. And this is a, you know something that you and I were mentioned. I mentioned prior, like we're we we yeah. see this this place right here is is maybe a pilot for what should be going up in in India, what should be going up in um, Latin America, what should be going up in. I mean, this is the the, the concept, right? So this is like a blueprint, and and ideally you want to be able to replicate the setup here in other places. Ad, ad, uh, adapting to the local bamboo to the local economy but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. using the the setup which works exactly and it's i mean you're going to be different in in all those regions but i mean processing of the materials is you know that's the fundamental place to, to start so uh, mm -hmm. for example these presses how do they um work how do we need to adapt them for working with guadua for example this is uh it's you know, in our, our test plans and our, our uh, consideration. And uh, it's not just that. We, we have, like, composites of, of wood materials with bamboo, right? So that you have a, a, a composite wood and bamboo product. Mm. So, I mean, there's, um, there's, there's a lot of, you know, ground to cover. Uh, You've got to be focused to, to um, point, but we, we're just learning from what's really essentially out there already and just applying it much as possible to what our resources are. And and Eric, what would you say are like, I mean, being in China, being in, in like uh, the Silicon Valley of bamboo <laughs> uh, and um, uh, having worked and, and lived there now for uh, uh, many years, what is your personal view and what are the, the, cha the challenges right now there regarding mm -hmm. Regarding bamboo, I mean, um, this is like a number one right now bamboo uh, producing a, a country and place. And uh, what are the challenges? Where, what kind of um, um, challenges do you have right now or for the future do you think are, are coming regarding bamboo? Mm. I mean, positive and negative ones. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, well, I look at them all as positive, right? You got to figure out the... The, if you're going to do something, you're, you're going to get faced with some some <laughs> things that you've got to go through if you're going to do it anyways, right? So, um, yeah. on the other side, we'll we'll learn from that and um, you know hopefully be better. So we mm -hmm. we um, I, I, okay we we can break it down to, to to segment. Certainly, I think of course China is the production uh, leader by far in in. Uh, yeah. bamboo products and, and materials and, and that's not a bad thing i mean it, it makes sense and and that is um that's good i think for for everyone because you know something starts somewhere and then it gets advanced and hopefully it gets reapplied elsewhere because it keeps helping people but that's you know the simple way of thinking about it right uh, mm -hmm. certain political climate and you know conditions where you have a really good product and you have things you want you want to move out well um, we, we have to do that in a very localized way. So what we're learning yeah. here, we, we, we definitely uh, want to be able to adapt that and bring it to the, the other markets and, and let them blossom with it too. Um, I think that challenge to, to scale it is certainly um, one of them because everything is right here and, and um, it's very advanced um, in terms of I think what most people understand of it. Um, mm -hmm. And so getting that into standardization, um, getting, like, especially in, when you're talking about construction uh, products and, and building materials and things that get specified, uh, well, the standards have to be accepted and they have to be uh, really um, established across the board. So. Uh, and they're doing that, like the standards have, have, of course, in the building and construction industry, they take time, uh, but and but they exist. Regarding and standards, so, 
Are, are yeah. you working with the ISO standards or uh, other standards, depending on the market, probably? Right. That's, so uh, yeah, and that's exactly what we do. So and also our <laughs> team is involved in those processes in in all markets actually. So um, our research team, um, they mm -hmm. they've done just an incredible job in advancing them here and internationally, including the ISO standard, which you mentioned. So awesome. Yeah. So there's a, there's a deep comprehension of all that, and you know, like trying to get it, uh, you know, understood and accepted. Of course, that takes them people locally to to really be moving it and understanding it as well so all of that in yeah. the, i think in the construction and building materials industry is um it does it takes time uh, of course with the, the push for sustainable products and low carbon uh incentives things that are really geared to all the you know obvious benefits of, of engineered bamboo those will maybe be um uh, accelerators to, to this adoption. But of course the building industry is not going to turn so quickly. So you got cladding, you have uh, decorations, you have other materials that maybe move a little bit quicker in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, so then when you talk about fiber challenges and, and, and those products, uh, there was a, you know, there's also a misunderstanding about what is a bamboo fiber and is it, you know, how is it, it, people of course think of like towels and uh, think yeah, of like yeah, textile yeah. industry, right? And there's there's a few uh, cases that were pretty uh, significant because they were launched about like, um, um, mis like misleading marketing practices, deceptive marketing practices. And that was, but it's, it's something that doesn't look good on the bamboo industry because people just yeah. blanket it, right? They, they take a certain understanding. Um, so I think there's getting around um, just the, the maybe preliminary understanding and that comes through having really great local partners who understand what you're doing because you can only change the minds of the people that you're, you're really contacting and, and then they can then pass that trust into the market of course without mm -hmm. uh, standards and certifications none of that will happen but it's it's all the groundwork that's been laid and, and now it's I think just getting um, these proofs out there and then start adapting it locally and I think you'll you'll start to see this happen um uh, much more uh i think aggressively in the next five years so what i i hear from what you're saying is it, it's like it, it it takes really a lot of time a lot of manpower to get to really high quality and high consistency and and this obviously takes a lot of money so the, there is a lot of uh, money uh, uh, somebody has to put there to get those results mm. um else it's it's not possible right well, it's a lot of parties involved, right? And it it takes, um, you know, it's government, it's private, it's yep. um, it's people taking risks, and and you know, it's um, you know, you have to compete against things that exist that are kind of like legacy products and legacy mm -hmm. industries. But that's yep. you know, we're seeing that everywhere around the world now, and I think the consumers are, are you know cha changing faster than ever. So, um, I I think at the end of the day, your product has to be good. If your product is yep. good. And and it really is what you say it is. It's gonna it's gonna be valuable to someone. And mm -hmm. and if it's not, well, then it's not gonna win. But I I truly believe that these are. Um, and I and I believe that there's a lot of people doing good valuable products like that. So I I, I believe that that will uh, really be the, the the reason why this goes and get through all those challenges. Because at the end, it is only so many like. You, you you got so much time to block a thing or like to not accept it, but if it's if it's really quite good, um, you know people are gonna want it, and if the price is great as well, um, that's just gonna Even make more. everybody be able to broadly accept it quicker. Yeah, cool. Okay, um, so we talked about pure bam, we talked about the uh, uh, structured or engineered bamboo, um, we talked a little bit about the challenges. Um, is there regarding, um, the, the I, I imagine the whole machinery we see in the background, this is super complex and you mm. need like, uh, you need like to always have somebody there to, to keep everything running because if something doesn't work, you, you can't uh, transform the raw material into added value bamboo, right? Right. So, I mean, this is, um, 
Wow. Yeah, like it's, it's a, the, the, in the industrial operation, we're, we're really pushing for this being um, a, 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 a very high functioning modern uh, system, you know, not, not too crafty, not, not too um, niche. We, we need to really be, be uh, producing, yeah, really, really uh, pushing on certain production levels um, so that we can get those costs down, that we can get the standard materials supplied to the market um, in a way that's going to, you know, drive all those benefits. So uh, it's got to be that way. And, and so the equipment here is, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really great step. Um, it's still an early step and it needs, uh, uh, you know, a lot more to, to work with it, but that's the goal of this, this facility, right? It, it's going to service the market, but at the same time, it's, it's really all with the, the long view in mind and how that next step is going to be, the next few steps are going to go connected with it. Yeah. So, so this um, would be where yeah. you talk a little bit about the, your vision regarding Alt Plus and where you see mm. uh, uh, the, the future um, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe I have to get a lead in. I, I, I see it, um, well, I, I, the simple way is I, I see it analogous to the, the timber industry, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe, um, with the growing demand over here of, of developing markets and also just to push for all this, the, the, the you know, more, uh, even forest products of, of wood, like everybody's pushing in this direction. If we could keep developing that, I, I see uh, not just our company, but it should be many companies developing across this um, uh, platform to, to service and, you know, uh, raw materials through finished products and also just servicing, um, you know, the, the actual forestry industry. Um, it should should look very similar to what we know already, uh, just maybe a different plant. Yeah. Okay. And um, uh, anything else you can share with us regarding Alt Plus or, or um, I mean, being uh, Canadian in, in China? Uh, because I think that's uh, also kind of a challenge probably or, yeah. or super... Uh, Mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I just played ice hockey last night, so I shouldn't really, I, I don't feel too far from <laughs> home. That's just how, how wild it is. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those scenarios where I, I'm really involved in, in what I do. I really love what I do, and, and I think it's the right thing. It's not very easy, actually, but it's, it's um, you know, I, I, I have, I've been lucky to be around a lot of great people and um, they, they just keep supporting me and, and we keep pushing this um, and, and it just keeps going deeper and, and, and I love that. So I, I think being in China is, uh, of course, it's, I'm saying all those things about you know being here where I'm very welcome. When I landed in this industry, you know, I was, people couldn't believe that where I was living, right? Like in the mountains in the small town, but you know, I, I was just taken in as kind of one of one of the family members, and that that, that was really um, where where it all just started uh, blossoming. So um, it's been like that my whole journey. I feel pretty fortunate for that, and you know now we are we're pushing back to to take this uh, all outside because you know we are essentially a Canadian uh, Chinese company, and uh, we. We have a very strong understanding of the, the you know, our home markets and, and also here. So we get to be in a unique space where we, we get that and we, we also service here. So, um, I guess so that gives have us a little bit of an advantage. In Canada. You have some clients in Canada too, obviously. Right. Yeah. So when I started in the industry, I, I first was, was doing Canada and, and USA. And I, mm -hmm. I jumped in in, uh, you know, uh, floor building materials, yeah. manufacturing those and selling them to, to North America. So um, then when I, when I really kind of changed the face to um, really architectural focus and structural focus, we were 
totally zoned in on the, the China market, working with oh. mainly international partners, so international Chinese companies and international foreign companies um, yep. that were, were here in China. So we, uh, for example, did um, uh, a, a beautiful, brilliant uh, German and French school uh, right in Shanghai. Uh, and oh. it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a, I actually don't think it gets very much coverage, but it, it's done by GMP, which is one of the best architectural firms in the world. And it's a, it's a gorgeous wow. piece of uh, modern uh, architecture and using engineered bamboo. Uh, we did that top can to bottom. Can you share photos of that for the blog article later so we can really yeah, yeah, uh, show some course. visuals? Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. No problem. But so. I guess the, the 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 point is like we're we're in a unique space here, so we we were focusing on that for so long, and and uh, it feels like you know the last three years were not very easy to get out and and uh, journey. So um, we now are 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 kind of like taking all that that we've been working on here and trying to uh, share that again and deeper with our, our partners all over the world, which are in the Middle East and uh, Europe and uh, Southeast Asia and North America. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a growing industry. It's got huge potential. It needs all the players it can and all the partners it can. It just needs good quality products. And I think it's, uh, you know, that journey will uh, probably take me right back around to Canada eventually. So that's how I, I imagine things. Awesome. And and what about academia? Do you also uh, work or collaborate with universities in China or elsewhere in the world, or is this too early um, right now? No, no, no. We are totally in step with the uh, academic community, and especially here in, in China. One of the you know our our team, our research team, uh, we have a, a cooperation uh, right here uh, out of these facilities. So we're doing research as well, and. Um, you know, that's in material space, that's in uh, finished uh, product space, that's in civil engineering, um, machining. So, wow. um, yeah, it's uh, like we have our market focus and they um, uh, work with us together to kind of see how, you know, these, these products can be advanced into the, um, well, our targets, of course, are, are, are about cost and, and uniformity and, and standards. So uh, it's a great mm -hmm. target for us. And uh, we often link up and uh, we're, we're always going to schools and going to um, different organizations and exchanging and doing talks. So, yeah, we're pretty, uh, we're, we're, we're doing as much as we can, I could say. We're not, we're not huge enough where we can just send like an army out everywhere, right? We're, but we're, we're definitely uh, scheduling all my time. That's for sure. Wow. Wow. But that sounds really uh, actually very exciting. Also, I mean, imagine for the students to be uh, uh, somewhere with a company which is like really uh, active everywhere and, and growing and has to be very uh, exciting for them to, to be able right. to be part I mean, of it. I mean, that's, uh, you're going to love that when you love what you do every day. Like that's, uh, that's a great thing. So, and, and I think that's one of the nice things about it. You know, everybody in our our team as well. It's I mean, it's an easy thing to want to be behind, right? And 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 support. I, I mean, the industry in general. So, of course, you want it to to make money for everybody and be very um, lucrative. But at the same time, you know, if everybody's getting taken care of and you're and this is all moving forward, um, there's a lot of um, commitment. And, and that's really what drives these changes and opportunity. Did, did it start to rain again over there, Eric? It, it did. If you notice, I'm kind of, we're, we're coming back into the, uh, you know, the heavy rain here. How, how's it okay. on your side? Uh, it's getting a little bit loud, but I don't know if you want. I was th thinking maybe we can make a closing shot with your team, which is around there, just to, uh, to uh, finish uh, the, the podcast for now. It's, right, uh, right. So cool. you want me to bring them in uh, here, and we can we can do a sign off. Yeah, if you like, we could do that. I mean, if everybody's there, why not? That would be yeah, kind of cool it. if let's you would like it. Cool, Give me one cool. second. <laughs>
I want to get everybody to come in behind and we're going to just do a sign off and wave. Yeah, okay. So can we get everybody in behind? Come on. Up, up, come in here. Hey, JJ? Yep. With, uh, okay, well, the visuals should at least work. Yeah, for and, sure. Uh, yeah, you can have uh, behind the b b structured bamboo or on top of the structured bamboo that should have space for everybody. Yeah, yeah. We, I don't we, know how we, big I'll, I'll get them all to come in right behind so, so you can cool, have the cool. bamboo up front here. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> come on in, guys and girls. <laughs> yeah, they've been... Uh, I kind of, you know, I know we had some challenges getting the timing down here for from uh, both you and my travel, but it worked out really well. Here we go. Look at this, uh, this crew. Wow. Let's come around, come around in here. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. That's a that's a huge team. So so cool. So uh, they can't hear because it's everything in my ear. But uh, everyone, we we uh, do that. Do that. We create just you. Here we go. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time, everybody. And uh, talk to you soon again. Yeah, thank you, JJ. <laughs> this has been great. And uh, good luck all the way, okay? Thank you. Talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Cool.